So this is part four of the French cleat plane tool. Last episode we cut the box joints for the main portion of the frame and today we're going to be cutting the dados. So I've gotten started without you and I've cut some of the dados already on the router table. This is the bottom part of the teal and then this here is the shelf that will be just above the bottom piece. And then I've also cut the dados that will hold the shelf on the sides of the till as well. I'll put a link in the top to a picture of what the plain till is going to look like if you're new to the series. If you'd like to start from part one in the series, I'll put a card at the top so you can do that. So the material that I'm using for this project is pallet wood and it's planed down to 3 eighths of an inch. So I've set my router bit at 1 eighth of an inch. Normally my dados would be deeper than that but um, I didn't want to take a chance on going too deep through the pallet wood panels and weaken them. So I felt like a third of the thickness would be most appropriate for the dado joints. Cutting these joints with the router table is not difficult. It's just a lot of measuring to make sure that the fence is in the right position. The fence is really what I'm relying on to uh, assure that each dado is in the correct position. So I'm actually cutting a dado in the lower uh, portion of the frame that will hold one of the dividers that attaches to the shelf right now and it's going to be at 6 and 3 sixteenths. So I'm just setting my 6 and 3 sixteenths from the edge of the um, box joint so I'm just setting my bit to that uh, dimension. Actually I told you wrong. This is the bottom piece of the cabinet and this is the shelf. And I've already cut the dado on the bottom of the, the cabinet and now what I'm doing is I'm cutting the dado, the matching dado on the, on, the, on the shelf. So each place I have a dado here, I'm going to make it in the same position on the shelf. Now the shelf is going to be a little bit shorter in width than the bottom um, of the frame because it won't have the box joints, it'll just fit into a dado. So I'm going to have to take off about um, four I guess about uh, 3 or 4 16th off of the length of this or 2 16th on each side um, in order to have it fit in the correct place. You may notice that I have it marked here to cut a dado in the center of this piece as well and unfortunately my router fence won't uh, expand far enough for me to get that distance so I'm going to have to come up with an alternative way to do that. I'm either going to have to uh, basically clamp a fence on this side of the bit or I'm going to have to do it freehand. I'm not sure. So we'll get to that here in a few minutes. If you remember from uh, part two, we actually filled some of the defects with epoxy resin. And this uh, dado actually went right through the epoxy and it cut it just as clean as it does the wood. That's really neat. I've never uh, run a router over epoxy before, but that is just as clean as, and smooth of a cut as you can possibly get, I think. I should have made each corresponding cut when I had the router bit set already and I just wasn't thinking about it at the time. So now I'm having to go back and reset each distance to match um, the other. It would have been easier if I had thought ahead and actually made the cut while I had uh, the fence already set. So the center dado is 12 inches from the, the outside of the box joints and my router table just happens to be 24 inches um, in, in depth. So I just uh, clamped a 2 before 4 here to give myself something to ride the, uh, um, give myself a fence to ride the box joints against to cut that dado. So I kind of, I got pretty lucky, um, otherwise I would have had to have basically uh, made some sort of jig on the on, on the workbench to cut this with a with a router. So I think this will work just fine. So I've got all the dados cut and now I'm going to go ahead and reassemble everything 
again, I'm not going to glue anything up at this point. That way I can uh, uh, measure out the, the length of the shelf. I'm going to have to cut um, probably two to four sixteenth um, off of that board for it to fit into our dados that we cut. It's amazing how strong the cabinet is with no glue whatsoever, just using the joinery tech techniques we've used so far. I mean, I picked it up and moved it, and, and it doesn't, I mean, there, it doesn't even uh, seem to risk of falling apart. It just seems really, really sturdy. So I've got my spacers all milled up, and they're all um, plain down to 3 eighths of an inch, just like the rest of the cabinet. I just got to get the correct um, length so that I can slot them in here. So I decided to go with pine for the uh, dividers and I'm also going to do pine for the portion that holds the hand planes. I didn't have enough oak from the pallets to do the whole thing from oak and I kind of like the contrast between the pine and the oak. So my router plane is only about three and three quarters inches tall. So I'm going to go ahead and, and put some dados here as well on these two dividers. That way I can slide in a small shelf and then I can store something above that as well. 